Hi everyone, it's me, Benjamin Crudwig, and this is the Design Time Podcast episode number 30. It has been a couple of months since I last uploaded, and that has been for a multitude of reasons. Um, the first one, I spent most of the month of June in Mexico with my wife. Um, she went to a summer program for opera down in um, San Miguel de Allende, and so I spent a month down there in June, and um, a week before that, I was at TNMA. So that was five weeks of me being away from home and being away from recording equipment and just basically the general necessities that I need, um, like, or the things that I need to record a podcast, mainly projects, yarn, um, good Wi-Fi, <laughs> that sort of thing. Um, then August, I spent a lot of time creating and working, so I didn't really record, um, which is silly because I have a lot of things to do and record. Um, I have a few reviews that will be coming out soon that I've been meaning to get around to and just haven't. Um, so today is basically going to be a work in progress and finished object video, and then I am going to film a couple of review videos since I have um, three things to review. <laughs> so I'm going to do individual reviews um, later. So let me tell you what I've been doing. I've been doing a lot of knitting, I've been doing a lot of weaving, uh, haven't done a lot of crocheting recently. However, I um, just recently released my How to Crochet a Top-Down Raglan Sweater on my YouTube channel. I had designed that course for Curious.com and my contract with them ended, so I was able to, I relinquished the rights to um, distribute it elsewhere. So I decided to upload it to my YouTube channel since it had been a while um, since I've done some tutorials. And so far, it seems like that's getting a lot of good response, which I appreciate. And I really hope that you decide to take a look at that course. It's about, I think, 10, about 10 lessons. And the whole thing probably runs about an hour, well, more than an hour, maybe two or three hours. And it takes you from the very beginning of how to even choose yarns. Um, and from that all the way to finished object and blocking, like learning how to properly block your um, projects. Hi. <laughs> so the first thing, I'm going to kind of go in order of length of time that these projects have taken me. Um, so this first one is right here. This is my cardigan that I have been working on for over two years. All of that is yarn that I spun during Spinzilla of 20, I think 2015 or 2014. So um, October of 2014, I spun a whole bunch of fiber from Spunky Eclectic Fibers, and I decided what better way to use it. I had, gosh, eight, I think eight skeins of yarn, um, and I decided that I needed a cardigan. So if you look at the body, um, you'll see that it's striped. And so what I did is I had one skein of yarn that was eight ounces. It was a long gradient from a kind of naturalish white through gray to brown to a lighter brown and then to black. And it was called caribou. Um, so I used that as the main striping color. Then this first half from here to about here I used another yarn called Hungry, um, like Hungry as in I'm hungry for food, um, because it was inspired off of sushi. And then this one right here, um, yeah, this one right here and this one right here are mm, Kismet, I think. And then this sleeve over here is Squash Blossom. And then I did the whole border and collar in the rest of Caribou. Um, 
So I didn't use all of the skeins of yarn in here. Um, I've used some for other projects and for some weaving. I think I gave one away as a gift once. So there is plenty, um, there was plenty of yardage for a cardigan. It's a little short for me. I haven't blocked it yet, so I know that it'll, it'll lengthen a little bit more. Um, but yeah, I was really, really pleased with how this turned out. I think that the stripes look great. The sleeves, so it looks a bit like a, a drop sleeve, but it's really a raglan style. But from here down, I held the yarn double. Um, so I actually, from the top portion here, I knit two together all the way around as I was holding this yarn double. So it just makes the sleeves really, really squishy and um, thick. So I finished that last week, and I just need to block it. All the ends are woven in, the buttons are sewn on. Um, I thought it was going to be reversible. Um, I added buttons on the back side as well. Let's see. But I made I-cord loops for the closure, and they don't really want to stay attached to this, so I might have to redo the buttons. We'll see. Um, you know, honestly, I don't know how often I'm going to wear this sweater anyway. It'll be, if I wear it, I wear it, and if I don't, I don't. Um, I'm just glad that I finished it. <laughs> so the next project I have is a weaving project that has been on my loom for over a year. And it is a long scarf. I think it's about two yards long. Um, I like to make my projects on my loom really, really long. And that way I can do a nice full wrap if I want to. Let me put this down a little bit. Um, and it just, I can, geez, just keep wrapping. So this is a tweed yarn that I bought last year um, in Boulder at Gypsy Wool and Fiber. And it's made out of llama and um, bamboo and a little bit of wool and some tweed. And I'm not, I'm not sure if it's silk tweed or wool because it just says tweed, um, which is not very helpful because <laughs> you can make tweed a few different ways. Um, so what I did is I warped up the loom. Let's see if this will come across. It's a very busy yarn because both of them were variegated. So this side here is one colorway and this side here is another colorway. And then what I did is I wove half of it with one color and then I wove the rest of it with the other color. So you'll see this side is a little bit more colorful because I wove with the blue and yellow and green flavor colorway. And then I switched right here and so then I started weaving more with that like brown and neutrals um, bit so this will be really nice um, to wear this season I might actually sell this so um, keep an eye out uh, it would be yeah I'll put it on Benjamin mm, maybe BenjaminCollin.com that I put it on I'm not sure I'll let you know on Instagram and if you don't follow me on Instagram, you can find my knitting and fiber exploits on Benjamin Crudwig, like Benjamin underscore Crudwig. And then for my fashion and textile work, find me as Benjamin underscore Colin, C-O-L-L-Y-N. And I'll put descriptions in the down bar. Um, so yeah, I was glad to finish that project. Ooh, earthquake. Um, so I, yeah, it took me a year to finish that project, but... Obviously, it didn't take me a year to weave the project. It took me about a couple of days of some focused weaving. Um, I've been, what I started to do about two weeks ago or a week and a half ago was every morning I would wake up a little bit earlier than I needed to for work and I would weave for about 15 to 20 minutes. And that gets a lot of stuff done um, that you wouldn't realize that you could get done, but you know, when you have that moment, that 15 minutes of just focused 
moment. Uh, it just really, really helps to get get stuff done. So let's see, where, what did I finish next? So while I was in Mexico, and actually just before Mexico, I had spun some yarn as a collaboration with Frost Yarn. She is a dyer and a bat, fiber bat maker and a spinner out in California. And um, I asked her if she wanted to do a collaboration. And I haven't written the tutorial yet, so I'm so sorry, Nicole. I will finish that soon. I have been catching up <laughs> recently. So I created a nine ply. So first I spun the yarn and uh, as singles, I should go back a little bit. So what I did was I created, she created, Nicole created nine bats that were all inspired by different planets in our solar system. And I spun them in sequence. So starting with Mercury and ending with Pluto. And I, so I, I spun them all the way through using my bulky bobbin. And then, so that was one direction. And then I plied them, I Navajo plied them the other direction. So that was a three ply. And I just added a little bit extra twist to that direction because I then plied it again back on itself the other direction for a true nine ply. Well, it's not a true nine ply, but a Navajo nine ply. And I loved how it turned out. Really, really super bulky. Um, crazy bulky, which was fun. And it turned out... Oh, and then I knit a scarf. So this all happened in Mexico. The, the knitting happened in Mexico. Uh, so let's see. It's a little blown out, but that's fine. Um, every planet I alternated. So the first one was stockinette. Then I did a textured stitch. Then stockinette. A different textured stitch. Stockinette. Texture. Stockinette. Texture. And ending in stockinette. And I think this turned out really, really well. I am probably going to send this off to Nicole so she can take it with her to her show this fall in November. And um, I'll be putting up a tutorial on my blog on how to create it. So um, yeah, I just loved it. Um, I know I'm saying um a lot in this, and I'm sorry for anybody who it bothers, but after not recording for two months, you get a little rusty. So uh, this this is fun. I will never wear this because it's a bunch of colors that I don't wear, and I'm okay with that. My wife probably won't wear it because she's not a huge knitwear fan, and so it might as well go become a sample for Nicole. Um, yeah, so that's this. That was recently done. And then, geez, and I'm probably missing things, honestly. I've been doing so much. The next pattern, or finished object, is this. This is the Neat or On the Rocks shawl that I created for Inzula Luxury Fibers. They just recently released a new yarn called Gertie, and it's a 100% American Targi wool. I have been on a wool kick recently, so I think you must have seen in episode 28, was my guess, 27 or 28, I wove three pieces for Sincere Sheep using their 100% American Cormo wool. And then what else have I done? I've done some other things with 100% wool or 100% American wool. Um, oh, one of them was Brooklyn Tweed. I did a hat with Arbor, their new yarn, and that was 100%. I think that was Targi. Yeah. So, yeah. So, um, Inzula announced that they were creating or releasing a 100% Targi yarn for, from America, and it was a fingering weight yarn. And so I was asked to design something for the release. And I designed this using two colors, using black and using um, sexy is the other colorway. So um, it's interesting. The black is not as black as I was expecting. It's a little bit more of a charcoal gray. I like it. All of their yarns are semi-solid the way that they dye. And I think that the Targi wool, 
usually, and this is not all the time, but usually 100% wools that are non-superwash do not take dye as vividly as superwash wools or as other fibers. So it's a little bit, um, a little bit washed out looking, but I really like it and it seems to fit with the theme. So it alternates between stockinette in the black and um, a textured section in the colorway sexy. And what it is, is neat and on the rocks. So, uh, it, and I don't know why it reminded me of whiskey, but I decided to name it after the, the common ways to drink whiskey. And up the center, gosh, is a lovely cable that just kind of breaks up the, the texture and the stripes. So I also added a button on one end, and at the very tip, there's an I-cord loop in the way that I wear it. It's just kind of letting the chunky part go. And then, I don't know, it kind of creates a collar. <laughs> and then I just put the button right here and it lays down the cable goes across the chest and then the tip of the large section just drapes down on the bottom and like you could always do it like this if you wanted one arm covered that's fine or you can just if i can find the button <laughs> if you can get out of it no. um you can just wear it like a normal shawl and that's pretty comfortable. Um, I just don't wear shawls that way. I wear more like kerchiefs. So you can wear this a few, a few different ways. And it's fairly large. It takes two skeins. Um, really, it takes less than two skeins. Like I only used about half of the black. I used almost all of the um, brown color, the sexy. But it, you know, it was very, very enjoyable to knit. And the pattern is up on Ravelry. It's called Neat or on the Rocks. And uh, this week on the 14th, my blog about the fiber um, and, or about the yarn and about the project will be up on the Anzula blog. And there will be a coupon code. So if you want to wait then, uh, wait until I think the 14th is Thursday. So if you wait until Thursday, there will be a coupon code for that pattern. And if you don't want to wait until Thursday, then just head on over to my Ravelry page and pick up the pattern. While I was designing the Neat or on the Rocks shawl, I also was designing this hat. And let me put it on properly. Oh, nope, this way. <laughs> So this is using Dale Garn Lurka Plus, and I got this yarn from Heart of the Mitten in Owasso, Michigan. They are the sole U.S. retailer um, and distributor for Dale Garn now. And I created this cabled hat because the stitch definition was amazing. I will be doing a review of this yarn, so if you want more details about the yarn itself, it'll be in that review. But I created this cabled pattern here. And then if you see, the crown decreases create a star on top. So I thought this would be a really nice kind of wintry yarn. Oh my god. My hair is also growing out, and it's feeling messy. <laughs> so um, the stitch definition with this yarn was absolutely fantastic. Um, so this pattern is not out yet. I haven't finished writing up the cables because they're a little funky. <laughs> they're not hard. You just need to be sure that you do the stitches in the proper order. Just like anything, really. So I'm hoping to have that up probably this week or next week. I would love to have it out before October starts. Um, so that's one of my new favorite hats. I'm going to wear this all the time this fall and winter. So after I finished designing those two, I just wanted a quick knit and I went up to the mountains with my wife's family and just needed a project to do that wasn't super 
like I didn't want to be paying only attention to the project. Like I wanted to be able to pay attention to what was going on and playing games. That family is very um, card game driven. So, you know, I needed to do something that I could easily pick up and put down during a card game or during um, Settlers of Catan. <laughs> so I created a striped hat. This one, um, again, has not been blocked. I need to have a blocking party. I just haven't yet. <laughs> um, oh my gosh, my hat matches my shirt. Goals. Ugh, yeah, it's a little too long, but it's a striped hat. I'm using Art Fill Yarns in their DK weight. No, their Aaron weight, geez. In Storm. Let's bring it back here. It's just, it's basically natural with some flecks of dark gray. And then this one is called Fjord, which is dark gray with these lovely tones. Gosh, this is not gonna pick them up, but there are some brown tones in here. You can maybe see it. There's a little bit of a, a sheen in there when I move it that's brown. And I just alternated stripes. So starting down here, let's see, I did like five, five white, or I should say five storm, five fjord, and then four storm, four, three, three, two, two, one, one, and then went back up to five. And then I just ended it with the fjord since I did the ribbing in storm. So this was a nice quick project. It was done in a few days, you know, or really a few hours when you sit down and do it. But Aaron Waite yarn for a hat in the round, just everything, it just goes so fast. And it was nice to have a project that didn't take too long. So I finished that. Um, as I'm dropping yarn everywhere, that's fine. And so technically the order of operations, I then finished that first woven scarf that I talked about. And that was off the loom. And I had some more of the Targi Yarn Gertie from Anzula Luxury Fibers. So, and I am really proud of this project. <laughs> I wove a pseudo houndstooth scarf using Sexy and Shiitake for the center panel. And then I used my leftover black as edge stripes on the hem. And I will stand up for this one as well. And you can kind of see the houndstooth pattern emerge when you have areas of high contrast. But the way that this yarn worked, because they're all semi-solids, there are areas of lower contrast. So where the colors are almost the same as far as tone. Um, and I thought it would be really interesting to see how a color and weave pattern is affected by variegated yarns. So um, this is what I created. The Targi yarn creates a really, really squishy fabric. Um, it just It's that crimp that's in Targi. And oh my gosh, like I just wanna squeeze it so much. And I'm leaving the yarn or the, the fringe as individual fringes. On the other one, I did do twisted fringe. So I just love how this turned out. It's a 2 2 twill. So this is a traditional hound's tooth of four threads, four threads, you know, alternating in both sexy and shiitake. The lighter threads are shiitake, and the more, the darker ones are sexy. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. And what I love about this is that the pattern is more apparent when it's further away. Um, and then when you get closer, it's much harder to see the difference, which I just love. I absolutely love it. So this one is not going anywhere. If they want it for their trunk show, I might send it out, but I might ask them for more. <laughs> and I'll just create another houndstooth scarf for myself. And I'll probably do one that's more traditional, so probably in a black and a, a lighter tone, but I don't know yet. You know, I might do like black and blue or gray and red. I don't know. We'll see. 
gray and red would be nice, or gray and orange would be even better. So I might do that. So that's all of the fiber. Um, I do have a sewing finished object. I technically have more than that because I finished a couple of things after Mexico, but I already sent them off to some friends in California who are my first clients. But I sewed a pillow cover using some of my fabric. This is my rock face fabric that I created using images of a mountainside that I took a photo of. It's just a simple, um, gosh, you can hardly see it. Oh, this way. It's just a flap pillowcase. But I did the flap a little bit deeper than you normally would, just because I hate when pillows pop out. Like, it just, why? Why do they pop out? It's so annoying. So I need to fix this. Um, so I sewed this up. I have two more pillows to do. And I am thrilled with how this looks. This home decor, this fabric is more suited for home decor. I started making a dress for my wife in this fabric. And um, it just, it wasn't draping the way I want it to because it was the 100% cotton that's like a, more like a quilter's cotton. So it's great for home decor. It's great for those more durable projects, but not that great for a dress. It doesn't flow that well. So... I'll probably get some of the jersey fabric. Um, I do, I did get some samples of the other types of fabric that I can get. And so some of it's like really flowy silk, shift, not chiffon, crepe, silk crepe. So I might get that. I don't know. We'll see. I, I have lots of plans and not enough money or time to do them right now. So that is done. I love how it turned out and I'm making two more. And currently I am almost projectless, uh, projectless, blah, blah, blah. I finished most of the things that were on my needles. So I decided I can actually do some other stuff. So I'm going to um, show you this real quick. Throwing pencils around too. This is Shepherd's Lamb Rambouillet yarn. Um, I'll be doing a review of this as well. Uh, so I'm not going to go super in-depth with this, but this is a, I would call it a DK weight. And this is naturally dyed in New Mexico um, with cochineal and, oh, I don't have my bag up here, but cochineal are little bugs that are often used for red dyes. Uh, Starbucks have been using them in their strawberry frappuccinos, but then they went vegan. So they stopped using um, that red dye. I think they use like a combination of beets now and something else. So I'm creating a simple hat. I just started with a two by two rib. I am now doing some stockinette. I might do some texture. I don't know. I, I love texture and this yarn is suited for texture, but I'm also kind of just craving another simple project. I've been feeling more like designing with weaving and with sewing and so with the knitting and crochet I just haven't been as like driven to do something like to design something knitting wise like I just want to knit for pleasure now for a little while um which I might I might still create a pattern for this I don't know like I always get halfway through a project and go like oh maybe I'm just gonna do this who knows so this is what I'm currently working on this will probably be done in the next two or three weeks because I'm just picking it up when I feel like it and I'm not in a rush to finish it. Then um, what is coming up? Oh, I got water on this at some point. <laughs> is And I'm probably going to insert a photo here because my, my hand sketch is like really rushed and not well done. But I am going to be doing a woven and sewn houndstooth motorcycle jacket again. So you may have recalled that I did one, um, I think in episode 28 or 29, I showed the fabric for the jacket. I don't remember if I had finished it yet. So I, um, I finished it and, ooh, maybe I have it. Okay, so I'm gonna stand back here. So this is my jacket, and it is woven on a rigid huddle loom first. The um, Grello fabric that goes from yellow, oh, shoot, yellow to gray, 
and I added inclusions throughout the piece just for fun to see, you know, how how will it look. And I this is a no waste project as far as the woven fabric goes. So you'll see here I added epaulets and these are the ends. This is the fringe of the yarn. Um, I'll show you the back. And then the sleeves are a fake leather. And um, I, I prefer fake leather because it's more environmentally friendly. Um, I'd like to get something that's... <sighs> Textile production is not always environmentally friendly. Um, however, raising cattle and livestock for the leather, like actual leather goods, um, is less environmentally friendly than, um, than fake leather. <laughs> so, um, or yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I am going to look for more fake leather that's even more environmentally friendly for this next project. Um, it's going to be houndstooth. I'm on a houndstooth kick right now. I love houndstooth. Um, and it's going to be in a Dijon yellow, a mustard yellow, and a teal called Peacock. And I'll be working with Blue Sky Alpacas again, or I guess they're now known as Blue Sky Fibers. And I'll be using their alpaca silk and a baby alpaca for the fabric. And then a fake leather for the sleeves that I'll probably be getting from... Um, mood in New York. I'll call them and see if they have a teal. <laughs> I might, I don't know if they do this, but I'm tempted to like send them a sample of my woven fabric and be like, hey, can you match this? Since I, I am not going to be going to New York or LA anytime soon. Um, I'm hoping to go L to LA near like, uh, not Christmas. What is that holiday? <laughs> Halloween. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm hoping to go there near Halloween, and maybe maybe my friends will decide that they want to come with me to Mood, <laughs> and um, I'll pick up some leather there. Um, so, and I'll, hopefully I'll have already inserted a photo of what I'm getting. So that's it for what I've been working on, and all of my finished objects that I could remember. <laughs> I'm sure I finished some other stuff that I just forgot about. And I'm hopefully not going to, you know, take, what, two and a half months for me to film again, um, and be on the lookout for some reviews. I'll see you all later. Bye.